there is over a trillion dollars of waste in supply chains today. The net zero carbon emission is something that corporates are taking very seriously. To meet these objectives, they're going to have to take into consideration CO2 emissions. Hi, and welcome back to this week's episode of Net Zero Carbon, the show here at Freight Waves where we deep dive on decarbonization and sustainability. I'm Tyler Cole, your host, and today I have the pleasure of being joined by Guru Rao, CEO of Nuviz. Guru, thanks for joining the show. Thanks, Tyler. Thanks for having me. Happy to have you on, and you're no stranger to the Freight Wave stage, so we're glad to welcome you back uh, and explore what Nuviz does, maybe through a slightly different lens today and, and focus more on sustainability opportunities that your company creates. So before we get into that, let's give the listeners a background. Who are you and what does Nuviz do? Sure. Um, again, my name is Guru Rao. I'm the founder and CEO at Nuviz. Uh, we've been in business about, about 12 years now <clears throat> and uh, you know, spent uh, 25, 30 years in the general supply chain logistics space, learning our ropes uh, in the technology space, operations, working with uh, a lot of retailers, transportation companies as part of our previous engagements. And, um, you know, about 15 years ago, as things were moving in a transportation space, more into a network ecosystem as e-commerce took over, you know, the deliveries, the the number of deliveries happening increased. And invariably, the shippers have to, had to work with uh, many, many partners, right? And uh, beyond few that they used to work with before. So it created a network ecosystem and there wasn't uh, weren't many technologies that uh, were uh, catering for that ecosystem because a lot of the technologies that we know of today and uh, you know 10 15 years ago they always looked at technology as within the four walls so we wanted to create a true network ecosystem based technology that understands the physical network and being able to replicate that on the platform and on top of that provide all the capabilities that are required to track and see what's going on and keep everybody informed at the same time, right? So that was kind of the broader vision. So with that, we started new 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 is twelve years ago, and we've been doing that ever since. Exciting. Tell me a little bit about kind of the journey to today. Do you guys still focus on that initial vision, or do you guys have new offerings or areas where you're working in? And also give me a flavor a little bit of like types of customers, types of goods, and maybe other softwares that you guys interact with. Oh, absolutely. So when we started, the broader vision was to, like I said, connect the network and being able to track something that goes from point A to point B, or help orchestrate that movement and keep every stakeholder informed with what we call context sensitive visibility, right? So that broader vision hasn't changed since day one, and it's still the same. The way we do that and the things that we provide for our customers have have evolved, obviously, over the 12 years. But, the you know, we are still sticking to that vision. I think there is a still a lot more work to do, right? Uh, <clears throat> and in terms of customers, uh, we grow, go across the horizontal breadth of uh, supply chain logistics in terms of uh, verticals, right? Uh, basically, like I said, our problem statement was, you know, something is going from point A to point B, and there are multiple stakeholders working on that, right? How can I orchestrate that move and create real-time visibility for all the stakeholders involved? So when the problem statement is that, I never defined what that X is, right? And what is what are those A and B points? So with that, because that's because of that uh, abstract notion of the problem, the platform is able to work across vertical uh, uh, verticals of uh, you know logistics. So we focus on healthcare pharma, uh, you know different flavors of healthcare logistics like uh, you know home prescription delivery, lab logistics, or what have you. We cater to food logistics, whether it's B two B distribution or B two C, uh, big and bulky like furnitures and appliances right, electronics, and we work with the three PLs, four PLs that cater to a lot of uh, shippers doing a lot of different kinds of businesses, right? So that's a, it's a, it's a big uh, breadth of uh, uh, customers that we work with in many different verticals. 
Exciting. And that to me says that we're not just looking, it's not a last mile solution. It's not a middle mile solution. It kind of cuts across all supply chain. When goods are moving in transit, there's visibility and there's connectivity between suppliers and partners up and downstream. Right, exactly. Correct. You're absolutely right. So uh, anything that is moving over the road, right? We don't do anything multi-mode, right? Okay. We don't do rail or ocean, but anything over the road, right? When you say last mile, obviously I like to say last mile is culmination of many other miles, right? To get to last mile, you are getting the product from somewhere. So people refer to last mile and have this notion of only when you, you know, ringing the bell at your door is the real last mile. But, you know, it is definitely last mile, but there are lots of other uh, aspects and facets to that. And then we connect those dots and typically, you know, everything moves multiple legs before it really becomes that last true last mile. And also when you are talking about B2B, even though you're not touching the consumer, it is still the last mile and you still have similar challenges that a true B2C has when you are catering to B2B, which is where most of our businesses business is in terms of our customers, right? So we cater to that middle mile as well as what is uh, traditionally referred to as last mile. Good to know. I may steal that phrase from you that the last mile is the culmination of many other miles. I like that. Uh, I promise you'll have a lot of those tidbits before the end of this. <laughs> I appreciate that. So tell me a little bit about, we've got um, the lay of the land for where, where NuViz operates, the customer base and the connectivity and visibility you provide. When we're pivoting this more towards sustainability and focusing on um, aspects that shippers are really, really trying to operationalize today, how does NuViz help? Is there a data access play around emissions accounting? Is it about efficiency? Is it about waste? What are some of your customers looking for in terms of sustainability with the services NuViz provides? Absolutely. So, and, you know, at the end of the day, we are all in the business of doing business, right? Uh, making money, right? There's no shame in admitting that. Um, as long as we are providing value to our customers. And the way I look at sustainability is common sense. Not because we are helping anybody, right? We we have to, we should, right? We all live in this planet and we want to leave a greater good planet for future gen generations. But beyond that, it makes common sense. It is common sense, right? <clears throat> so towards that goal, the platform helps our customers manage their business efficiently, right? Every every step, you know, there are multiple different areas of delivery and uh, transportation. There's so much inefficiency inherent, inherent in the ecosystem that we take out from the platform, right? Just with the uh, pure uh, optimization, right? Better planning of your routes can take away anywhere from 25 to 30% of uh, your miles. So I don't have to tell you that you are saving planet by optimization. I can tell you you are saving 30% miles. So it's the same message in a different language, right? Which is very, you know, which is very explainable, easy to understand. I'm not putting any undue altruistic, uh, you know, notion into that, right? That is kind of how I look at it, right? At the end of the day, that is how we are solving, you know, our customer's problem. And, and in, 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 in doing that, directly we are helping the sustainability goals, right? So that is kind of the, the biggest part of it. I mean, there are multiple aspects of that. One is the mileage, right? Obviously, it's fairly easy to uh, help. And then beyond that, right, the notion of network, is very important in solving this problem of uh, you know delivery and transportation. Of course, we all know it, it is like the biggest part of your uh, cost from a transportation standpoint, you know, what have you. So, and today more and more things are getting delivered. So you don't want to create single channel for every every one of the services. How can you bundle that? Right? How can you create a pool point? How can you create uh, a logical uh, point where you can consolidate uh, demand and then kind of you know use one resource to do the work rather than doing multiple resources or also using the resources to the fullest possible extent without leaving air? Right, All of those uh, things that we help uh, our customers solve using our technology, which directly you know, is attributable to the sustainability goals. Excellent. What I'm hearing you say 
is that it's we always look for the win-wins, the easy efficiency gains that result in transport savings, fuel savings through lower mileage and better routing. That's that's number one, and probably the easiest way to explain because we we have rules for accounting, we understand how the math works, and we see the benefit when we're not spending those funds. It gets harder when we start trying to quantify and attribute emissions because whether people like it or not, carbon accounting is not to the same standard yet as gap-based financial accounting. We are slowly making our way there, but people aren't as comfortable trying to understand the counterfactual of, well, you would have emitted X if you didn't do Y. Um, is that something customers are looking for as a deliverable from you guys? Are we, are we seeing more customers want to know, I get it, I'm saving money, I'm reducing emissions, but how much? Are they coming to ask that question? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Like the classic saying goes, right? <clears throat> you can't fix what you can't measure, right? And especially now in the sustainability area, you know, the regulations are starting to come in where you have to show where you are in terms of, uh, you know, uh, disclosures. Mm -hmm. Along with your financial disclosures, you also have the, you know, <clears throat> ESG disclosures. So as part of that, a lot of the large, again, the, this is uh, driven by large shippers, Right, where they are trying to understand what is their, where is, you know, what is this, where they stand in terms of uh, carbon emission, right? How much are they using, right? So that is the biggest uh, challenge. Again, when you, when, uh, especially when you get to the scope three part of it, right? Which is a very hard uh, problem to solve, mainly because of the lack of technology that existed in the space. Right, everybody used to operate, like I said, within the four walls. I do my work and I give it to the next partner, and the next partner goes and does the work, and then will tell me back, you know, come back and tell me what happened. That may work very well if that partner is a dedicated partner, right? So he, he, they can easily tell you what what happened, you know, what are the total emissions and you know your usage and all that. But we all exist in the commingled world today. That is, every carrier is working for many shippers at the same time. So when that is the in that ecosystem, without technology, it's very hard, if if not impossible, to really measure the scope three part of it. So that is where a network-based solution like ours come into play, because we help our customers operate in a commingle scenario. As as a network, we understand who is the owner of that shipment, right? If I have 10 shipments on a truck, who all contributed to that 10 shipment, right? Then there are some challenges like, you know, every delivery is not just about going to that point. There is a stem out, there's a stem in, where who who do you go to attribute that miles to, right? So those are the challenges that, you know, our customers, so we help them in really tracking those and attributing the prorated information so that everybody gets to see what is their portion of, you know, mileage usage or carbon emission, right? And that is a starting point which helps them to kind of then figure out how can you help reduce that, right? So that's the biggest, I think that's where we are helping our customers, some of our large customers solve those problems. And uh, it's going to be you know, a uh, lot of lot focus, uh, you know, happening in that space from our customer standpoint. Good to hear. It's a, it's a tough nut to solve. You mentioned a few things there that I'll double click in and just reiterate for listeners. Scope three is really hard and it's really hard because you don't often know who's doing the work and you don't have a direct relationship to get the data you need for a really accurate carbon accounting calculation. Yeah. So it's, it's comforting to hear that that's a focal point because as we make progress, I don't know that we'll ever get to a point where it's fully solved and everything's connected because to your other point, the commingling, the optionality is what provides us with value and the ability to move goods at low costs on time. If we were dedicated and knew the provider every time, we have a lot more inefficiency. So it's this delicate balance of how do I keep my operational efficiency and continually improve my data gathering process and estimation. So I just wanted to highlight that for listeners because it's really, really important to understand. And the other thing that you mentioned that's hard that I don't think I recognized was um, when we're talking about a lot of these commingled shipments, that carbon accounting is even more complex. It's easy enough to say 
a load of freight all kinds from A to B on one carrier with one emissions factor. Okay, I got that one. But when you're talking about containers on big vessel ships or you're talking about commingled last mile route deliveries, the accounting gets different. So it's important that you guys are able to provide that data for customers and allocate those accordingly. Yep, you're absolutely right. Again, because we are an execution system, right? We are not uh, somebody who is aggregating the data from different sources. We are actually involved in the execution of that itself. So when I'm doing that, oh, we have all the data, right? Exact actual miles, actual emissions, right? Uh, and then I also have the data to understand how much of that is attributed to shipper A versus B versus C so that I can create that, right? That's a great starting point, having that uh, you know data to begin with. Absolutely right. What other opportunities are you seeing in this space as shippers become more and more focused on wanting sustainable options? Where is there kind of white space for execution systems or tech platforms to to deliver value to customers? Yeah, I think more and more our customers are embracing the notion of network, which used to be a very alien uh, you know thing to even uh, wrap their heads around because everybody started with the notion of this is my data, my business. I don't want to tell anybody about this kind of a notion. But more and more, like we are living in this network economy, network ecosystem, right? Uh, so nobody is existing in isolation by themselves, right? <clears throat> so however big you are. So uh, we have seen uh, you know, our customers embracing that notion, understanding that and being open to that notion, right? Uh, so that's where <clears throat> I think the, you know, we are moving towards. That's the only way we can really understand right, what is happening so that way we can come to a place to solve that problem, right? To that end, you know, there are also initiatives in the logistics about shared services, right? To be able to, you know, again, I, I say this in, in, in every one of my conversations, how many times have you seen how many trucks coming to your home today delivering, you know, stuff to your home? We'll see a UPS truck, USPS truck, you'll see a XPO truck and another you know, local carrier, all of them coming to your house, delivering goods from different people. And I bet you none of them is 100% full, right? So that is the real reality of transportation and delivery ecosystem today, right? There's a huge opportunity for us as a society to get into a shared services model, right? And it is directly contributing to sustainability, yeah. right? And of course, cost, right? And we haven't we haven't been able to do that till now because everybody looks at looked at their technology as their own technology and not as a network technology. Right? So if we embrace this network technology and create make it easier for people to share information, to be able to even consolidate demand, you need to have that visibility in the first place. Yeah. Right? So creating that network visibility is, is a is a key for everything. You know, every any any type of optimization to be able to do optimization and leverage resources better, and you know, reduce miles and everything. So slowly, I've seen you know, you know, we have seen that uh, transition, uh, openness, understanding uh, within our customer community, and uh, it's not a hurdle anymore, right? As long as today we have the technologies to be able to provide the data securely, right, and with all the privacy and everything, honoring all of those requirements, right? So I think that from that standpoint, we're in a great place. You know, we, we are now talking about beyond just the table stakes of optimization and execution and all of that to a next level of uh, conversation where we can optimize the network, right? Uh, so that is an exciting uh, area and we are seeing that transition happen with a lot of our customers. I'm sure there's a lot in that solution and we don't have time to unpack this, but when you get to the big data opportunities, all the AI and machine learning that's going on in there to find those optimal solutions, um, I'm sure there's a lot going on in the background there and that's exciting, but for another show. I think another visual that makes a lot of sense in my brain at least is as we were talking earlier about the commingling of assets, providing efficiency and optimization of the physical network. The same thing is now happening more and more to your words with the data around the network. And as you get that efficient commingling of data, you can 
start pulling out insights and finding efficiencies in the physical network that you hadn't seen previously. I find that really fascinating. You guys, um, we talk a lot about visibility and for the sake of climate, everybody wants to reduce emissions, but there's also a reality I think we have to acknowledge that, um, especially this week with you know wildfires up in Canada, crowding out the, the sky in New York, it's important to realize that we do have to work on mitigation too and adapting to the new environment. And I imagine visibility will play a larger and larger role when we have to deal with more frequent storms, wildfires, weather events um, in a changing climate. So talk to me a little bit about how visibility might not just help us be more efficient, but also be more resilient. Absolutely. I mean, you're, you're absolutely right. You know, supply chain resiliency has been in the forefront of conversation, especially since all the COVID disruptions and everything, right? And that is only going to get worse, right? I mean, we are going to have uh, disruptions. It's not not done deal by any means, right? And on top of it, we are also having you know disruptions related to weather, extreme weather, storms, floods, and whatnot, directly or indirectly connected to climate change, right? So when when those things happen, when supply chains have to react to those, how can they do it, right? <clears throat> In again, it comes back to the network technology. I'll give you an example. One of our large, you know, pharma distribution customer, uh, one of the carriers in one of the regions, had to shut down because of uh, some businesses uh, reasons or what have you. And because of the way the network architected and the way they operate, we they were able to find, uh, they found a new carrier in that same region. They were able to move all of that to a new carrier in a matter of the, in a, in a weekend, right? The Friday of that, that carrier shut down. Monday, a new carrier was operating. And they're they are moving thousands and thousands of cartons every day, right? So it was a, you know, literally a flip of a switch to get the new carrier onboarded without affecting any of our uh, their end customers, right? It would be unheard of, I bet you, in if you were using uh, within the four walls technology, it would have probably taken them months, if not longer, to be able to make the change, right? And think of the disruptions that you had to deal with if you have to go through that, right? That is one example of how, you know, the notion of the network technology would help creating a resilient supply chain, and the same. The reason can be anything. Reasons can be, you know, you know, weather related or or what have you. So we're going to see more and more of that. So I, you know, just goes to show how the network notion of technology would help in creating a resilient supply chain, right? In across across the board. So that's kind of you know a great example of uh, how we will be able to. You know, weather the storm, if you will. <laughs> no pun intended. <laughs> and your puns are for me on this show. That's my job. <laughs> That's a great example. And thank you. It's very clearly a powerful tool that we're going to need to leverage more and more into the future. Um, we are running close on time. I, I'd love this conversation and could keep going, but we do need to start wrapping it. And so I'll, I'll pose the last question to you. Everyone that comes on the show gets this one. Guru, what is your personal motivation for embedding sustainability or focusing on it as part of your day job? You know, again, for us, I like I said earlier, we are, we are, you know, we are human beings. We live in a society, right? We are not, you know, we have to work together with everybody, right? That is uh, the only way we can do that is working together, right? <clears throat> so that I think applies in both personal lives as well as professional lives, right? And that's kind of the notion when we when we started the idea of network because it was not an easy conversation to have 10, 15 years ago to go and tell our shippers, share your data that everybody can see, right? We would be shown the door, you know, right off the bat. So, but like, like I said, the thing is changing. People are embracing that idea, right? And that is what gives us pleasure in kind of saying, okay, I think we were, you know, uh, thinking on the right, uh, uh, on the right side. So that keeps us motivated, right? And of course, uh, you know, leaving the planet better for future generation is a side. I, in my mind, that is a side effect. I wouldn't wake up thinking by no means every day, right? Uh, like I said, I want to speak the language of business. I think that is enough for us to talk about that and it directly affects everything else, right? So I think, you know, we, uh, we are in a great place 
um, and you know everything that's happening in terms of opportunities that we have and the problems that we can solve. Uh, you know, taking the technologies that we have to our customers. Exciting and well said. Thank you for sharing your perspective and appreciate the work that you're doing. Thank you for coming on the show. We look forward to having you back sometime in the future. Awesome, Tyler. Thank you very much. Appreciate your time. My pleasure. There is over a trillion dollars of waste in supply chains today. The net zero carbon emission is something that corporates are taking very seriously. To meet these objectives, they're going to have to take into consideration CO2 emissions.